As you guys know, the Ninja Alchemist combination is absolutely goaded in BT Battles 2. I mean, that's why they put them next to each other in the tower screen, right? Well, maybe it actually isn't goaded anymore. And that's because in the recent update, Ninja Kiwi hit this combination with the absolute nerf hammer, and here is what was changed. First, the Ninja Monkey was nerfed very significantly, with the Sharp Shurikens being decreased in price, actually, from 300 to 200. But the biggest change here, guys, is it only increases Pierce by 1 instead of 2. With this, the price of the double shot was increased from 650 to 750, so the double shot overall is the same price as before. But the double shot actually has one less pierce because this previous pierce nerf carries over to all the other ninja upgrades. The cow traps also can no longer receive pierce buffs as it used to be able to before. The flash bomb stun duration has been nerfed from 1.1 to 1 seconds, and the Blujitsu cow traps damage has been nerfed from 10 damage to 5 damage. Alongside of this Ninja Kiwi said, Ninja Monkey has spiked up in popularity since last update, with the Ninja plus Alchemist combo standing out as overly strong in all stages of the game. We have made quite a few changes to address this, such as keeping the additional plus 1 pierce in the early tiers, but taking it back from the 2xx, with some price rearranging to accommodate. Caltrops no longer benefit from Pierce buffs, which nerfs their interaction with the Alchemist buff, and Blujutsu's Caltrops have additionally been nerfed. Blujutsu already stood out as a super effective upgrade, even in the late game when surrounded by Shinobi buffs, so the added Caltrops damage is unnecessary. But not only was the Ninja nerfed, guys, Alchemist actually got nerfed a ton as well, and here's what they changed with the Alchemist. First, with the Alchemist, the base Pierce has been nerfed from 14 to 12, and the Splash Radius has been nerfed from 14 to 12 as well. Next, the larger potions, the 1xx pierce, has been nerfed from 20 to 18, and the splash radius of that has been nerfed as well from 21 to 18. Additionally, the stronger acid upgrade, the acid now deals damage every 1.33 seconds instead of 1 second, and it lasts 1 additional second, so it lasts longer, but it damages over a longer period of time, so it does the same amount of damage, just less quickly. And lastly, the rubber to gold cash per pop has also been nerfed from $2 to $1.5. Lastly, with this Ninja Kiwi set, as previously mentioned, Ninja and Alchemist have become too dominant recently. Alchemist is super effective at providing solid early game DPS, despite its primary role as a support tower. Its strength in early game DPS, buffing support, and cash generation gives Alchemist too many strong points, therefore we decided to lower its early game DPS and money generation. So guys, that was a mouthful to go over, but as you guys can see, Ninja Alchemist has been absolutely shredded with nerfs. So I want to try the combination out and see if it is still viable in Battles 2. So let's hop right into it and show you guys how it's done. Wait, before we hop into the game, guys, there's some really cool stuff going on in the shop right now, which I wanted to show you. First of all, being the Strictly business, where you can actually automatically unlock Highwayman Jericho, which is one of the best heroes in the game, along with the Money Talks avatar, some Monkey Money, and Hero XP, which is really nice. Along with the Strictly business showcase, you can also get club membership, which is always here in the shop, by the way, and it's lifetime access to these club benefits, which include double Monkey Money rewards, double golden bananas, custom rules to private matches, unlimited tickets to club events, welcome pack of monkey money and exclusive items, and lastly, you can create clans for free. So if you guys are going to get a club membership, Strictly Business, or anything from the Battles 2 item shop, before you purchase it, go down to the bottom right here where it says creator support, and put in code RYANMAHALIC spell just like this. By doing this, whenever you purchase something, you support me in the process, so I'd appreciate that a lot. But now, on to the video. Thank you guys for your support. Alright guys, our first match of today's video with Ninja Alchemist is on the map of Sun Palace with strategy Ninja Alchemist and Sniper Monkey. But yeah, as you guys know, this strategy was absolutely hit with the nerf hammer in the recent update. But, I want to see how strong it is, you know? I haven't really gone Ninja Alk at all since they gave it a bunch of nerfs. I want to see if it is still viable. This is one of the best maps for Ninja Alk here, so this will be a good, this will be a good testing ground for it. And, I'm going to start with my Ocean Open right here and my Alchemist right there. But yeah, we brought Ninja Alk Sniper, which was, the I would say, probably the meta strategy during the Ninja Alk meta. The strategy was absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Very, very good. Um, You can get your Ninja Alchemist start. You can get the Rubber to Golds going. You can get a bunch of Sniper Farms in the map. You get the Cripple Moab out helping you out late game. There's just a bunch of good aspects to slow down. Now we're going to Zangul here, who's starting with their um, Boomerang and their Gwendolyn. So they're certainly going an interesting loadout then. Boomer Gwyn is something you don't really see too often so we'll have to wait and see what they're rocking with but i got my ninja down i got my alchemist we're chilling on our side and yeah our early game though is going to be a little bit not really our early game around 11 round 13 defense is going to be the thing that takes the hit the most i think with these nerfs having the alchemist um damage blow balloons at a slower tick rate with the stronger acid having your ninja have less pierce those other types of things that are going to impact my defense here so i might need to play i'm gonna need to play it safe to make sure i can defend for sure Need to play it safe. Also, what is their boomerang spot? That boomerang spot does not seem that good there. So I'm not really sure what Zangul is cooking. Let's get sharp shurikens on this guy. 
They end up going for a Kylie. Okay. Fair enough. Let's actually target my living coral right here. All right. And should I double shot this? I guess I don't need double shot yet. We'll just chill. Yeah. Don't need double shot yet. Sharp Shurikens pops one less balloon per throw than it used to. And so does the double shot. Well, pops one less, has one less pierce than it used to. And so does the double shot and the Blinjitsu now. Okay. We got double shot now. We're vibing. It looks like their Kylie's kind of defending right now, but I feel like they'll struggle against white balloons and black balloons. Unless their Gwendolyn supports them enough. I just don't think that's a very good Kylie boomerang placement from my opponent. I don't know why you'd place it here. Like, why would you not place it somewhere like here on last and it would just like hit down this way? You know what I mean? I feel like that'd be so much more effective. Black balloons. Uh, let's upgrade my alchemist here a little bit. I don't know if this defends because obviously this stuff was nerfed a ton, so... But it seems like it's kind of working. The nice part is we have Ocean Open. So Ocean Open's buffing the pierce of my ninja a little bit, which helps me out. Can I go for a second alchemist? This should be enough to defend white, uh, yellow balloons, I'd imagine. I've also got a decent living coral pile on the back. So we're good, we're good, yeah. Everything's fine here. All right, good start so far, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty good start to this game. My eco's looking pretty good here. We are against an eco loader as well, so um, honestly, I'm happy about this because I don't think there's a boom, there's not really a boomerang eco strategy that's gonna go late, that's gonna fight late game well with me. So we should have a late game advantage. And since they have an eco loadout, it's going to be hard for them to pressure me. They don't have farm money to pressure me. So this should be a pretty good matchup for me, in all honesty. Pretty good matchup for the first match of today's video. Let's get a sick to make sure dip on this guy. We're going to save it for that Berserker Brew as early as possible. Okay, let's get the Berserker Brew up. We're chilling. They go for a second Boomerang on their side. Still have not seen their other two towers. We've only seen Boomerang out from them so far. Let's throw down more Living Coral. Village, okay. Boomerang Village. I guess maybe if it's Boomerang Village Super Monkey, they might... No, Boomerang Village Super Monkey still would not beat me late game, because I have sniper farms. I could just send them a big enough rush to kill them late game, yeah. I don't think there's a strategy that they could be bringing that I'm kind of um worried about facing. I feel like I've got a good matchup no matter their third here, which is good for me. Even if it's Super Monkey, I still think I can kill them late game. I'll have enough money for my sniper farms, guys. Sniper farms go absolutely crazy. So yeah, I think I think I'm in a pretty good spot here. We're saving for my rubber to gold. If they don't rush me, I'm not gonna buy the Blinjitsu. Um There's no reason to buy it if it's not uh provoked out of me. Okay, well, they are rushing me now. Let's get Jitsu up. That should be enough to defend. Yep. And now we're gonna get rubber to gold up. Because if I just buy the Jitsu like willy-nilly guys without being rushed, then he probably doesn't even send that rush. He probably doesn't waste a bunch of money on a rush if I'm just going to buy it straight up, you know? So, wait to get the defense forced out of you. You know what I'm saying there? Wait on it. Okay. I'm feeling good. Feeling happy. Um, 1,200 eco is not bad at all here. We're just going to keep max eco in. I'm assuming the last tower is Super Monkey, but obviously, I have no clue at the moment. It could be something random. Honestly, should I go for a second rubber gold eventually? I'm thinking about it. The rubber gold did get nerfed recently, though, is the thing. The rubber gold makes, I think, $1.5 per coated balloon instead of $2 per coated balloon now. But it's still definitely worth to go for, even after it's been nerfed, because my opponent is going in eco loader. Oh, it's sniper from them as well. Okay. Yeah, they don't have any late game, bro. Boomer, village sniper, they do not have any late game. So they're going to have to be aggressive at me is the only way they can win this. Their late game viability is trash can. Trash can mode. All right, let's keep throwing down these living um living corals here. They got another village up. They went for a price discount. They're pri double price discounting. Are they going for a um, monkey city? They are. I honestly don't agree with that play. Um, I'll tell you why. If I have an old eco source in my loadout, I do not go for the um increased eco village. I think it's better just to spam sniper farms with that money. It's better to sniper farm with your money than go for an increased eco village most of the time. If you have a village old eco loadout like they have, so I wouldn't I wouldn't follow in those footsteps personally. Wait, should I go for a second rubber to gold or no? Uh, let's go for a second rubber to gold. Go for a second rubber to gold, then I'll start saving up for sniper farms. Will be the plan. Okay, second rubber to gold will be here in a second. 
Perfect. Make some money from the ceramics, which is nice. We're good, we're good. They're good as well. Wait, what do I do against a tight mole brush? Yeah, I've got to actually... Since... Ever since the slow's been nerfed, they also added all the tight rushes to the game, so... I don't know what my answer would be necessarily with Ninja Elk. Maybe just like a bunch of stacks on a sticky bomb with an elk buff probably defends a decent bit. Probably just do something like that. Or you can sell my elk buff now. I've got the sniper farm up. There should be enough defense. And I've got the tree in the back as well. Add a little defensive support for us. Yeah, I think that'll be the plan. If they send me like a tight mobile out, I can go for like a ton of a ton a sticky bomb, a ton of stacks on it, a sabotage, elk buff on the sticky bomb, tower boost if I need to. That should work out pretty well. Unstable Concoction as well. Unstable Concoction show up a lot against the Titan Moabs because everything's just put together like that, you know? Alright, pretty soon here I'm going to get this up to a Elite Sniper. Perfect. Puts on first targeting. All is good. They're spamming Boomerangs on their side. Holy cow, look how many Boomerangs they have. They don't have a single Sniper farm up though. Yeah, that's why I don't like, I don't like the idea of going for that village first, personally. Not a single sniper farm is not very good for them. Okay, let's sell one of these because my snipers are now taking away my rubber wood money, unfortunately. Okay, just gonna stick a uh, balloon sabotage preemptively. I'm ready to build up a bunch of defenses if they send me a tight mole brush. I'm ready. It doesn't look like they are. Okay, we're fine then. We'll just keep sniper farming. I'll probably stop my eco um pretty soon here and just full sniper farm. Stop my eco pretty soon. And just full focus on sniper farms. Maybe 4,500 eco will be the plan. Because the game's not going to go super late. Especially with them going boomer village sniper. Which I don't think is a very good loadout. The game shouldn't go super late. They still don't even have a sniper farm on their side, by the way. Like, what's the point of bringing sniper if you're not going to sniper farm? I don't understand. I don't understand, brother. Okay, 4,501 is the eco amount we have. Okay, just keep it on these sniper farms. Sticky bomb on our right side. We're good, we're good. We'll go for a main mob on my side pretty soon here. All is good. Supply crate. Okay, they actually started going for sniper farms on their side eventually. Soup too late though. They just die against BADs. There's no way they defend, right? I'm gonna stop my sniper farming pretty soon here. I don't know how many sniper farms I have. Well, uh, we can take it a little bit later. I don't have to stop my sniper farming early. I can play a little bit defensively for a bit in case they're going to send me. Where do I want to put my Alk buff? My Perma Brew. Perma Brew go right here. I am getting it up super late, so I need to be careful about that in case they rush me. Perma Brew has been bought. They went for a prot. The boomerangs don't do good BAD damage, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna rush them. I'm just gonna rush them. I mean, like, what's the point? There's though that's not defending anything late game. It really isn't. I don't. I don't see how it's supposed to defend. Okay, they went for a cripple on their side. They went for a mob domination. The mob domination has a ton of BAD damage to begin with, though, so it shouldn't really pair that well. They're going for turbo charges on their end. Okay. Like, I see I see the vision of their defense. I just don't think it's going to work at all, though. They might defend, like, a couple BADs, but it's not going to do that much. Just keep sending them. All I need to do on my side is keep up a Master Bomber here. I can even sell my Perma Brew. Okay, did they actually they actually popped one? They aren't popping the rest though. Alright, oh, got ten stacks on the master bomber. Yeah, they're done for. They are done for. I think they popped two BADs. Surprisingly they popped two and they almost popped a third. So I mean They go for cold arms on their side, they boost. They actually popped three. Okay, well, honestly surprised they did that much damage. 
kind of underestimated the loadout, to be honest. I think they might pop a fourth as well. If they had homeland defense, if they bought homeland defense, they might have actually been able to um, defend the rush. I could have definitely taken it later and won more convincingly. Don't get me wrong, but honestly a bit surprised in how much that defended. All right, guys, our next match with Ninja Alchemist is against my man Swalala. We are on the map Korra, which actually Ninja Alk did used to be used on this map quite a bit when it was meta. So even though it's a very difficult map, Ninja Alk was used on this map a little bit. The opponents are in with their wizard there. So we're going uh, Fate Weaver Door here with Ninja Alchemist and Farm. This was the strategy people would use. And yeah, see how this plays out. Um, let's get my, I think I'll place my Fate Weaver right here will be the plan. Perfect. Start with the Alchemist, get our Fate Weaver down. We're vibing. They're going Wizard Start. That's fine. Don't know what loadout they're bringing. I honestly forget what hero they brought to. I don't remember. So we're going to have to wait and find out on that one. Wizard Start shouldn't be that good for them here, though. Let's send them some Space Balloons. Their Fireball is going to get overrun. Yeah, they go for Wall of Fire. But Wall of Fire is not very good on this map because it's not in an intersection. You always want Wall of Fire in an intersection. Or else it doesn't defend stuff very well. Because on the downtime, the Wall of Fire... Uh, on the downtime, tons of balloons just sneak through. And you're kind of done for. But let's go for an early farm here. Because my opponent's letting me. So, might as well get an early farm on the map. You know me. You know me and my greed. Alright. Still no hero from the opponent. And it's round three here, so... That's a little interesting. Let's go to Ninja down right here. There's the hero. It's normal Jericho. Okay, so it's Agent Jericho is their hero of choice. Interesting. I am leaking a little bit here, which is not very nice. Let's get Sharp Shurikens. They go for Boomerang. So it's Boomer Mortar. It's Boomer Wizard Jericho is their little. Probably Boomer Wizard Farm is my guess. I don't know why you'd start with the Wizard, though, over the Boomerang. I feel like you definitely start with the Boomerang, especially on this map. Especially on this map. Let's upgrade the farm once. Okay, we are gonna... Oh yeah, double shot is expensive now. I forgot about that. Double shot's 750. It used to be 600. Okay. So I need to save up for that. I might be in a little bit of trouble here. Double shot has been bought. Alright. And then we're gonna get stronger acid on this guy as well in a second. Let's use adorability. I think I'm good. Let's get stronger acid. I'm, I'm going to assume this defends. I'm actually not sure, though, because Double Shot has one less pierce now, so... Let's see. Um, it does not look like it's defending at all. Okay, let's buy larger potions on this. With larger potions, I'd defend surely, right? Surely, I'd I don't defend. Oh my gosh, Ninja Alchemist sucks. Holy cow. Literally, before the update, I would defend with my larger potion, Stronger Acid, and I wouldn't even need a Double Shot. I would have had a, um... I would have had a Sharp Shurikens Ninja and I would be defending. Oh my lord, this is bad. This is bad, this is bad. Okay. They balloon boosted at me. I think I'm defending now though, because I have two conjured weapons at once from my Adora, which helps me out quite a bit. So now I'm good. Uh, let's use Adora ability, anyways. This has been an ugly start though. Ugly start to the match. On the bright side, though, my opponent can't be going a good loadout, I'd imagine. Like, I've got to tower boost this. I think I've just got to end the game round 13. I'm in such a bad position here. My, I've used two tower boosts, and we're on round 9. I, I think I'm just going to try to kill him round 13 here. It's going to be my best shot. i got to get a longer map for Ninja Alchemist to work, especially with all these nerfs. I can't play it on a map like Koru anymore. There's no shot this is going to work. Let's get, let's get Berserker Brew up. Because, oh my gosh, does it suck. Yeah, we're going to try to end this game round 13. It's going to be the plan. They might, it might honestly end round 11. I don't know if they can afford their... I'm not sure. I should have sent purples to begin with. They tower boost. They're dead. They're dead. Yeah, we won. Okay. All right, get me out of there, bro. That was a that was a rough one. I'll be honest. We beat Swalala, though. GG, brother. I'll catch you guys in the third and final match. Hopefully, we get a longer map so I can actually kind of cook with it. Okay, we got a little bit of a longer map for our last match of today's video, guys. We got Cobra Command, which Ninja Alk was used on this map quite a bit too back in the day. So I'm gonna start with my Alchemist. I think right here is gonna be the Alk spot. We keep this guy in last, and then we'll be in our Ocean Open round one. I switched from Fate Weaver Door to Ocean Open because I don't know. I feel like you need the you need the Ninja Pierce from the Ocean Open. Especially with how it is now. I think I need the extra pierce. So we're going to Ocean Open here. They're going to Ice Start. 
Ice start is interesting. Um, they brought Jericho as well. So Jericho ice. Don't really. I'm gonna assume it's probably Boomer sub ice is my current guess. That is a loadout I see sometimes in Hole Masters. People go Boomer sub ice and they're really aggressive with that loadout. Is what is a uh, is it something I see floating around a little bit? Is there a ninja down though? Is there a ninja down? The Alchemist has less pierce than before too, which I think it impacts our early game a little bit against Red Balloons. I forgot about that change. A little bit less pierce on the on the Alchemist can impact us a, a tiny bit. Yeah, but there's the boomerang, dude. I know my loadouts, bro. I play this game way too much. I know the loadout once I see like two towers come out from my opponent. Or the, a tower and a hero. Yep, there's the blue balloon. So they've got eco. Okay. Honestly, this should be a matchup that I think I've got a decent chance in. Still, defending the rushes is going to be really difficult. Don't get me wrong. But they do not have a farm strategy. So they aren't going to have farm money to rush me with. So that's one thing I've got going for me. I should have placed a farm there and I didn't. Oh, well. Place a farm now. Let's target these living corals all the way in the back. Perfect. And let's get sharp shurikens up. I actually need to remove this obstacle as well. This obstacle causes a lot of problems on this map, if I remember correctly. Okay, they're stealing from me. Uh, I'm just going to buy Calatrops to avoid the steal. That probably wasn't the smartest investment because I probably should have upgraded my Alchemist instead. But, you know, I just wanted to avoid the steal. So, And it's still my farmer. They have normal Jericho though. So avoiding steals is going to be extremely important for me here. I avoided that first deal pretty well, but buying Calatrops was not the smartest decision of all time. I'll be honest. Let's get larger potions here. Alright. Keep throwing down these living corals in the back. All is good. Let's upgrade the farm. Perfect. Okay, yeah, go for a second alchemist, because we're going to need that for yellow blooms anyways. Oh, do I need to upgrade this to double shot? Is my ninja absolutely throwing the bread again? I think it is. I do need double shot. This should defend yellow balloons though, right? Right, chat. This definitely defends yellow balloons. I've got enough defense for yellows. There's no way I don't. There's no shot. I don't have enough defense for yellows. Okay. Avoid the steal. Okay, we avoid that pretty well. It's really what I need to be doing. The biggest thing this game is going to be to avoid the steals properly. If I can avoid the steals properly, even if I'm spending extra money on defense and everything, I'll be I'll be happy about it because the steals are the biggest thing they've got going for them with their with their loadout. Let's go for another farm here. Keep them on those living corals. Alright, we're vibing. We're vibing, we're vibing. Round 9. Acidic mixture dip. Uh, they aren't rushing me currently, so we're going to go for another farm upgrade. All is good. Another farm upgrade. Perfect. We're vibing. Okay, they get their next steal in round 11. So I want to avoid the round 11 steal, of course. That's going to be important for us. Yep, there's the steal. Avoid it, avoid it. Okay, we're avoiding it pretty well. Perfect. They got their submarine now. Yeah, Boomer Sub Ice, bro. I told you guys from round one that that was their loadout. That's crazy. That's crazy. I knew it. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Alright, are we good against Space Rainbows with my current defense? Please tell me we are. Please tell me I do not need to buy a Bloom Jitsu against Spaced Rainbows. Okay, we're fine. Perfect. Alright, a big thing for me here is going to be to get that Rubber to Gold up. Um, Especially because they have an Eco loadout. I'll be making a ton of money from that. And if they rush me, I'll make money from the rush, which is important as well. So, we got our Lead to Gold up. Um, Okay, one second. These Balloons are actually a problem, aren't they? Holy cow. Okay, Rubber to Gold has been bought. Perfect. Keep this guy on strong. I think we keep this Alk buff on strong here. Rubber to gold is going to be absolutely massive for me here. And obviously, if they rush me, I'm buying that Blinjutsu. But I don't need the Blinjutsu if they don't rush me. And they actually haven't rushed me yet, which is good for me. I expected them to be a little bit aggressive towards me. And they haven't really shown signs of aggression yet. So, yeah, let's get my farm up to avoid the steal a little bit. It's a little bit hard to avoid the steal now because I've got rubber to gold income flowing in. Which is feeding their steal. But it's still worth for me to get a rubber to gold nonetheless. It's definitely still worth I'm guessing if they haven't played aggressive in the early game, their game plan is just to maximize their eco in the early game and play aggressive in the mid game with a strong eco to back up the aggression. It's probably what my my opponent's planning on doing. So I'm expecting to see some fortified BFB 
fortified ZMG Titan Moab type rushes coming in is what I'm going to expect. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to defend them. The biggest thing I'm scared of is Titan Moabs. I don't know how I defend Titan Moabs with my loadout. I'm thinking about that sticky bomb play that I was saying in the first game. But I don't know if it'll work. Or how well it'll work. Okay, they're sending me that. Let's get this up to a Blunjitsu. Let's boost this. Okay. Let's get a stronger stimulant on my side. Alright, is that all? Okay, it looks like they aren't going to rerush me. That was a really big rush they just sent me, by the way. I don't know if you guys realize how big of a rush that actually was. They sent me two Moabs and a bunch of Regal Rainbows and stuff behind it, so... I'm, honest, I'm definitely fine boosting that and building up some defense. We got up a D Camo Ninja, by the way, up top. So then my um, Rubber to Gold hits some of the Camo Balloons from the AI path. Very important. I'm honestly going to go for a second Rubber to Gold, as crazy as that might sound. Two Rubber to Golds. Because they, I'm against Jericho, so I'm going to make really good money from the Jericho AI. Boost. They're just feeding my rubber. They just fed my rubber to gold so much with that rush. Boosting that was probably not a good decision, though. I probably should have just spent money on defense and not boosted, but because I am down to one boost now, which actually kind of sucks. I need to make sure I don't use my last boost. Using my last boost is going to be a, would be a bad idea. Would be a very bad idea. But I'm honestly fine with that. They spent a lot of money on the rushes. Okay, I'm gonna stop my eco at 2k. 2k eco is good enough for me. 2k eco is fine. For everything I need. I'm expecting a fortified ZMG from them. Oh, uh, they actually haven't sent one because they're still ecoing. If they break their eco, I know they're sending me something, but they haven't broke their eco yet. Okay, let's go for a central market. My farm and eco is not bad at all. And the big reason why my farms and eco are still pretty good is because. I didn't really spend much money at all to defend those rushes. I just boosted against them. I boost greeted. And I had rubber to golds on the field for the rushes too. So my rubber to golds made a ton of money during the rushes, which was also pretty big. So those are the reasons why I've still got pretty good... Um, I've got a pretty good economic standing this game, I think. I honestly should be able to afford Master Bomber. If they all out me with like tight mobs or something, I can afford Master Bomber. I've got enough money. If I sell everything for a Master Bomber and a couple Shinobi stacks, so I shouldn't be too worried here. I should get Wall Street this round as well. I'm honestly in a good spot. I'm in a very good spot. I get Wall Street this round. Oh, uh, but then I might have to sell it the next round if they... We'll see. We'll see if they send me tight mobs. And it depends on how many tight mobs they actually send me to. How much do you sell for? I've got 12... I've got 16k of selling with marketplaces. Okay, they're sending me that. A Sabo this? Go for that. I think the plan is just to BMA this, as crazy as that sounds. I don't want to boost it. I think my plan is literally just to BMA this. I need another round in, though. I need another 10k from my Monkey Wall Street to afford BMA. I need another 10k from Monkey Wall Street. Is what's necessary. And I should be able to afford it. I should be able to get BMA up. In all, in all honesty. No questions asked. They're sending me a decoy. There we go. Perfect. We're good. Honestly, BMAing that, I don't think was a bad decision. I don't think that was a bad decision. Given our... Uh, given our circumstances. I I either BMA that or I have to tower boost, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I could have defended that boost this with my money situation. And it was also slightly ramped, I'm pretty sure. Here, send me one of those. I'm just going to master bomber this. Would be the plan. I'm not going to BMA this one. Master Bomber. And I'm also going to sell this for a Permabrew. As weird as that sounds, I need to Permabrew everything really early here. 
to defend round 30 fortified bats. So I'm going to sell that to Permabrew. Okay. They're actually sending me that, and I'm kind of in trouble here. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh my gosh. I almost choked. I clicked my farmer by accident and couldn't micro my things. I almost choked that, guys. I almost choked that. We're good. Oh man, that would have been so... I would have been so mad if I choked that defense. I would have been so mad. Okay, that was actually a good game. I'm not gonna lie. We made we made Ninja Alchemist work, guys, against an aggressive opponent. That's what I'm talking about. Make sure to drop the like button and drop subscribe if you enjoyed today's video at any point at all. And also, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Ninja Alk is still viable or do you think it is trash now after all of the nerfs? But that's it for today. And if you did enjoy today's video, you're going to enjoy this video, which showcases what I'd say is the best eco strategy in the game. And that is how strong is a map full of fan clubs. So go check that out. But right back out. Peace, lads.